The Dead 3. Hello everyone and welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. Yesterday I reviewed House of the Dead 2 and today I'll be reviewing the House of the Dead 3. The House of the Dead 3 was released to arcades on June 1st, 2002 and it was running on the Sega Chihiro Arcade 4 which is interestingly designed off the original Xbox. House of the Dead 3 was surprisingly not developed by the original creators AM1 but instead by Woe Entertainment, though I believe AM1 might have had some involvement in creating the game. After its arcade release, House of the Dead 3 was released on the Xbox in North America on October 24, 2002, and released in Europe and Japan in early 2003, and was ported to Microsoft Windows only in Europe in 2005, and after that, AM1 actually came back and ported House of the Dead 3 to the Wii in the compilation House of the Dead 2 and 3 Returns, which was released in early March 2008, and then an HD port was finally released to the PlayStation 3 in early 2012, which is the version I will be reviewing today. House of the Dead 3 takes place 21 years after the original House of the Dead, in the year 2019. A military commando team is sent to a private facility that is owned by Kyrian, where they are investigating what caused the outbreak of Undead, and during the mission, things go wrong, and retired AMS agent Thomas Rogan, who is in charge of the mission, goes missing. And two weeks later, his daughter Lisa Rogan, along with semi-retired Agent G, who is Rogan's former partner, go to the facility to find out what happened. The House of the Dead 3 features similar gameplay mechanics to the previous House of the Dead games, but there are some changes. First, you only seem to have one branching path, but you can choose what order to do your stages in after the first section, and doing them in a certain order will change the path you take a bit. This time around there is no humans to save, but instead you are trying to save your partner when they get into trouble and after you succeed you are awarded with a bonus life. Another interesting feature is this time you are equipped with a shotgun and it will automatically reload when you run out of ammo, but it does take time so you can still reload it by pumping the move controller or firing off screen for using a light gun. One final change is now there is a ranking system and at the end of each stage you are judged by your performance and you can achieve anywhere from the glorious S ranking all the way down to an E ranking and this is a nice addition to the game. Alright, after fighting your way through the game your character Lisa is reunited with her father who was saved by Danielle Kyrian who is the son of Kyrian and while G helps get Rogan to safety Lisa and Daniel confront Kyrian who has undergone a 19 year resurrection process and is now a cyborg and has electrokinetic abilities that are known as the Wheel of Fate. And I will tell you guys, 
I think this is the hardest boss in the entire House of the Dead series. You need to defeat Kirin, and I forgot to mention another new feature in the House of the Dead 3, is the cancellation bar for bosses. How it works is instead of just hitting the boss's weak point, you need to continuously hit the weak point until the cancellation bar is drained, and then the boss's attack will be cancelled. Though the bosses still take damage regardless, but just a lot more slowly. After you defeat Kyrian, and depending on how well you did, you will be treated to one of several endings, but I have only seen one which has the four characters leaving the facility and it seems like everything is over, and the House of the Dead storyline has come to an end. The House of the Dead 3 is a really good game, but there are some problems. The House of the Dead 3 looks amazing, and the PS3 HD port looks great, Though I wish it was in 16x9, though the 4x3 ratio still looks really good. The House of the Dead 3 is a step up in terms of visuals, but I feel it is a step backwards in terms of presentation. The House of the Dead 3 only features an arcade mode and time attack mode, though in the PlayStation 3 version the arcade mode is now called survival mode. The House of the Dead 3 has a good arcade mode that is longer than the two previous House of the Dead entries, but the lack of very many branching paths and the fact that you're not saving anyone and instead constantly saving your partner can make the gameplay a bit repetitive, and the lack of minigames and a boss rush mode really makes the House of the Dead 3 feel hollow. The voice acting is not perfect, but it does feel like a major step in the right direction which when compared to the House of the Dead 1 and 2. The controls are solid and the PlayStation Move controller really makes the gameplay feel like the arcade original. The House of the Dead 3 is a really good game that I really enjoy playing, and the PlayStation 3 HD port is really good. And it's one of the best games available for the PlayStation Move controller. I really wish Sega had released a physical version of House of the Dead 3 on the PlayStation 3, either by itself or along with House of the Dead 4 because that would have been awesome, and I would have bought that in a heartbeat. The House of the Dead 3 gets a final score of 8 out of 10. I highly recommend you guys check this one out. Tune in tomorrow when I'll be reviewing the House of the Dead 4 for the PlayStation 3. I will talk to you guys later. This is the Entertainment Wizard, signing off.